Hello MC, I hope everyone out there is healthy and safe. My name is Tamar Levy and I'm an embedded coach in several English 102 sections and I wanted to share some tips with you as we transition to online support. First, please reach out to your host faculty and ask how you can best support their online teaching protocol. Secondly, you're already enrolled in each of your classes Blackboard sites. Use this to email the entire class, reintroduce yourselves to the, your students, offer some words of encouragement, and let them know how they can contact you. I'd like for you to consider foregoing your general study session hours and seeing what kind of traffic you get just through email. I have found it to be extremely useful so far. As some of you might remember, I have spoken to you before about the classroom culture. This is when the in-class sit-ins for embedded coaches is so very important. I had a student email me last night in panic mode. She couldn't find the mini syllabus in the Blackboard site. I not only had a hard copy of the mini syllabus because I attend class each week, but because of my familiarity with the host faculty Blackboard site, I was able to direct her to it very easily. Finally, I want you to investigate and look into all of the different types of online tools that are being suggested to you. And lastly, when you are in touch with your students, please try to project calm, have a sense of humor. They're frustrated by the technology barriers as well. We will all get through this together so long as we are patient with one another. Thank you and stay healthy. Hello, uh, my name is Mohib Durrani, sometimes also called Dr. D. I'm an embedded coach with the Achieving the Promise Academy, ATPA, under the leadership of Angela Rowe. We are adjunct faculty embedded in high enrollment and high DFW courses. Since the outbreak of COVID-19, Montgomery College has instituted emergency procedures for remote instruction after the spring break of February 2020. We are very thankful to Dr. Pollard and Dr. Rai for their leadership to ensure training of all faculty and us, the embedded coaches, for remote instruction. Elite, under the leadership of Dr. Mills, has provided many webinar trainings for the use of Blackboard Collaborate and Zoom software for video conferencing with our students. I had to reach out to our younger generation uh, to make this selfie. My younger son, a senior in high school and who is very tech savvy with selfies and Instagrams has been my mentor for this selfie. I have not taught online courses before so far and would like to share some successes and challenges during this challenging time. I have been able to join remote class visits with my host faculty who has been using a Zoom software and have highlighted the important points during the lecture by using the chat option while the professor was teaching. Email lists have been uh, generated uh, amongst the embedded coaches so that we could have, uh, we could learn from each other our challenges as well as our successes. And there were two separate email lists that were made, one for um, Blackboard Collaborate and another for Zoom. Some of the challenges were comparatively the steep learning curve in spite of the webinars which were recorded for reviewing uh, both for, from Elite as well as uh, directly from the makers of uh, Blackboard and uh, .com and Zoom.com. It has been a challenge for the students to join the remote st uh, study sessions, which is a new process for most of the students. It is also difficult to recognize which student is not understanding um, because we are not able to see their expressions while the session is going on. I will end by saying that this has been and is a very interesting and valuable experience and has brought out the best amongst our colleagues while maintaining social distance due to the remote uh, cooperation. Best wishes, be safe, wash hands, maintain optimal safe social distance.
Have a great day. So something that I've been able to do uh, this past week is to just put a lot more information up on course content. So for both of my classes, the students are already comfortable using course content and they're already comfortable using announcements, but I've also started using discussion boards and some of the other features in Blackboard. And to get students on board with this, um, in course content, I have included a lot of videos for how to use some of the different features of Blackboard that my students are not comfortable with. So you can see that there already were um, different learning modules for each week in Blackboard, but I've gone in. So if you look, let's see if we go into student preview um, and I'll go back into course content for week eight. So I've included some introductory information for students and then um, one tool that I have introduced them to is Zoom and we also have started using Microsoft Teams and I was able easily using a screenshot to show students where to go um, to start using Teams and it's been a nice way for my students just to chat, to post questions and for us to stay in touch in addition to the office hours and to the whole class meetings that we're having through Zoom. Um, I mentioned Screencast-O-Matic and that's been really helpful because I've been able to show my students um, just brief videos about things like how to take a quiz on Blackboard for my particular course or um, for my other course, how to access uh, journals on Blackboard, something that they had never done before. So I've created lots of little videos in addition to individual videos for students, giving them feedback on their writing. I've created a lot of videos just on how to use different features of Blackboard that pertain to my class that my students are not used to using. Hi, my name is Lauren Strawbridge. I am an English professor and ATPA one-on-one -on -one coach, and I've been asked to share with you my experience in how I'm engaging my ATPA students during this remote learning process. And I'm happy to report so far it's going pretty well. I was able to reach out to all of my students either through email or if we were already uh, used to communicating with my ATPA cell phone, I sent them a text that way to just arrange, hey, when are we going to be able to speak virtually either over the phone or through email, whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, I So I spoke with one student yesterday everything's going well with her. We were already used to having most of our meetings over the phone, so that worked well. Um, another student, actually this is a pretty positive turnaround. I had a student who didn't want to meet at all with me this past semester. She has a lot of social anxiety, and when I reached out to her through the email to say, hey, let's try to do this again in a virtual setting, she responded with, an extremely lengthy email updating me on everything that's going on. So I'm feeling confident that that's a new way for the two of us to be able to communicate. Um, as for the others who have responded to my emails or my text messages, um, they seem confident with being able to communicate with me through over the phone. So that's pretty good. Um, I'm going to hold off on introducing them to Zoom. Um, just so I give them an opportunity to catch up to whatever technology their professors are using in their courses. I didn't want to be throwing something new on them while they're already being bombarded with a bunch of new technology. So right now, mainly using the phone and using email. Um, and that's, that's working fine for the students that I have. Um, I hope this was helpful. I'm available if you have any other questions, and thank you for your time. I am Professor Krishmurti, ATPA Embedded Coach in the Math 181 class taught by Dr. Monique Peters at Montgomery College. Recently, the college transitioned from on-site to online classes in view of the coronavirus pandemic. Dr. Peters announced that she was going to use the Zoom platform to deliver instruction. So I installed a Zoom on my laptop and became familiar with it. Initially, I had a WhatsApp video chat with two of my students, 
They showed me the problems with which they wanted help, but I found it difficult with a cell phone to actually show them the material that I had prepared for them. So I invited them to join me in a Zoom video conference, and they did this one at a time. So I individual conferences with them, and I was able to show them not only the final solutions, but also the intermediate steps that I had worked out on paper. And I was able to scan the paper and bring that onto the screen of my laptop and do screen sharing. I was also able to bring in the web assigned homework application and display the results that way. Since then, I've had two more Zoom study sessions with my students and so far it has worked out well and it looks as though I am able to help my students. And I hope you find this information useful. Hi MC, this is Elise Meredith from the Germantown Writing, Reading and Language Center. Um, I don't know about you, but in the last two weeks I've learned at least three different teleconferencing systems and a bunch of other things. Um, and it's been a technological challenge. Um, there's definitely t moments of frustration, but when I'm frustrated, I remind myself that this is always a learning experience and I have a great opportunity to put myself in the same position that a lot of our students are, which is I'm a learner now too. Um, when it comes to using new technologies, one thing I always try and remember is that if I'm trying to make it do a specific thing, I'm more likely to get frustrated. So if I keep an attitude of kind of exploration and seeing what it is I can do with it, then I'm going to actually learn a lot more. So remember, perfect is the enemy of good. Be kind to yourself. We're all students now.